this procedure now is uh, neonatal resuscitation. Okay, and then for to begin with this procedure, uh, you need to have certain instruments available. So, if you look here on this tray, there's uh, an ambu bag, okay, with a, with a mask. These ambu bags have different sizes of masks. As we know, these children, uh, the neon when they are born, they are of different weights and sizes. So the masks are there and they have got indications there. So this one is a size one. So that's zero, one, two, just like that. And then on here we have got what we call a penguin sucker. Okay, this is a penguin sucker. And here we have a bowl just to clean the penguin sucker. It's for suctioning this one. And then don't forget to always have your timer. So this is our nurse's watch, which we'll use as a timer for this procedure. And then also a box of gloves, which you need to wear gloves. On this part here, we have uh, an inclined plane. It doesn't matter which situation you are, you might be in a rural setup. Just use your blankets to make an inclined plane. We'll explain why we do this. Okay, and some uh, uh, towels for the baby, for the newborn baby. And obviously there is the baby that we have so if you are in a established department not in the rural you will find that this provision here is provided for you and we call that machine a resuscitator the resuscitator has got um, uh, where we put place the baby which is already inclined at 15 degrees and also it has a heater on top and a timer where we set including oxygen supply, suctioning and as well as a temperature gauge for the child. Okay, so in this setup we do not have a resuscitator and the resuscitator is also inbuilt with a timer. So to begin with um, in this procedure when we have a child who or a neonate that's asphyxiated there are a lot of things that happen to the body. As the child is in neutral, basically asphyxia is just where the child is deprived of oxygen. Okay, so there could be there are three causes. Okay, there are maternal causes, there are placental causes, and as well as uh, um, placental. I think I mentioned placental, maternal. And neonatal, yes. The three causes of asphyxia. If you want to look at, you can go and look at neonatal asphyxia for more details. So when that happens, for whatever reason, this neonate has been deprived of enough adequate oxygen. There are chemical changes that happen in the body. Some are adaptive for the child. And uh, in doing so, this child goes through various stages. And in these stages, this is where this procedure is uh, effective to reverse whatever was happening to this child. So, if this child is being deprived of uh, adequate oxygen for whatever from whatever cause, there are there are systems, the system in the body, including especially the heart rate. The heart rate will either increase or reduce depending on how severe. Okay, there's a point where blood is uh, where oxygen is deprived to this child and then now the body now reacts in different ways if we look at for example if we are taking the APGA score of this mother we have been monitoring this child this uh, sorry we have been monitoring this uh, mother who's got who's pregnant and we have been taking the fetal heart okay maybe you have opened the pathograph all right and then you are checking the fetal heart. Usually you will find the fetal heart rate will increase. Okay. That's just a sensor to say, okay, something is lacking. So the body will increase the pulse to the, uh, the, the, the heart will increase the pulse. Okay. To supply more blood and more oxygen to the rest of the body. And that's where we find the, the, uh, the heart rate will start increasing as we are checking uh, the fetal heart. Then, as that is happening, we the, the 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 problem persists okay 
their senses will come and say, okay, the body will sense that, no, something is wrong here, okay? And because of that, the heart rate will begin to reduce, okay? Then there will be little supply of blood to the peripherals, okay? And uh, the, 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 the adaptive adaptation for this will make sure that the body will just supply blood to the essential organs, the heart and the brain, okay? This is this term is what we call they call it the diving effect. Okay, usually mammals, even us human beings, when we dive into cold water, the body automatically detects that coldness and reduces blood flow to the extremities and only supplies enough blood for the brain and for the major organs. Now, when this happens, the problem is that those other small vital organs like the gut, the liver, the kidneys will be affected. And then they will end up uh, losing, and will end up losing the child because uh, they are not getting enough oxygen and blood supply. So hence why we call this uh, the resuscitation procedure is an emergency, because if this asphyxia is prolonged, this child will start developing what we call uh, the, when they grow up to have cerebral palsy and all those other defects that we have. So now, when starting the procedure. Yes, you you'll be wearing gloves, okay? That's the first thing. You put on gloves, protective clothing for yourself and for the child, for the neonate. Okay. So as this procedure, when you receive this child in an asphyxiated state, usually we would even when that happens, we would cut the cord a bit longer than usual, so that if we reach a state where you have to supply uh drugs which they can easily be administered so as i start the procedure first thing i need to do is provide warmth so the room should be warm either i can cover the baby or i can put heaters close windows so that the room is warm if you have a research stair well and good you just turn on the heater and then make sure you look at your time you set your time as to when you start the procedure or it uh Basically, this procedure is supposed to be done, the resuscitation procedure, within 20 minutes. So, we have 20 minutes. And if we look at if it's severe asphyxia, we have exactly 10 minutes before brain damage starts to set in. So, we need to be quick and swift. Okay. So, usually the pulse rate will be low. And asphyxia is graded, as we know, using the APGA score. So, for severe asphyxia, you need to act quickly okay so we have the penguin sucker i mentioned that the ambu bag and the mask and the time so when i set my time if i'm alone i'll shout for help you need to shout for help like help asphyxiated baby you are let those around you to come and help you do the procedure okay then after you have shouted for help you have set your time you know okay i've started this uh procedure at at this certain time, I have 20 minutes to this time to be done with it. So the first thing you do when you get the child, you place them, the head facing towards you, isn't it? This is there so that the secretions, uh, we avoid further aspiration of secretions, okay? So this is why we do this, and we place the head like that. And the first thing you do now is because of, uh, we need to keep this child warm, and the way they are, if we, the first thing I'll do is to wipe the baby. Why are we wiping? We do not, we want to, as we wipe, okay? As we wipe, you are preventing hypothermia, isn't it? And when you're done wiping, this uh, towel that you use to wipe, don't forget to remove it from underneath. We do not want to lose any heat, okay, using that towel. So if you are in an environment where there is no resuscitation, don't forget to always cover the baby so that we prevent a loss of uh, heat. But in this case, as learning will open up, if you have a resuscitation, well and good, the heat will be, be supplied to the child. So the next thing that you get now is you get the penguin, the penguin sack. Most people have a problem using the penguin sack. So using a penguin sack, you create a vacuum. Okay, and place it in the mouth and the nose of the uh, infant. 
So, when you release, when you release, okay, you are able to suck out the secretions and then remove them into the receiver. So now, the demonstration of this, if this is the fluid, okay, you're using a penguin sucker. Most people, if you find out, if you're doing your OSC exam, we see students going like this. Okay, in short, this is what you're doing to the secretions. You're just pushing them back, you're just playing with them. Nothing is really happening. Okay, so if you go in and press and let go, nothing comes out. Okay, so the best way to do this is you create a vacuum like that, place it in there, let go, and then the penguin sucker will suck out all the secretions you release. So that's how we use the penguin sucker. So I will make the vacuum and start suctioning from the mouth. You place the penguin sucker in the mouth five centimeters and release. You release the secretions and pull out. Okay, you pull it out, you clean out, and again, if the secretions are a lot, you can do it again. The reason we're starting in the mouth, so that in case we suction the nose and the child is able to breathe, there will be nothing in the mouth for it to aspirate. So we start with the mouth, five centimeters. Okay, this penguin sucker will move in the mouth all the way up to there. Since this is a dummy, it doesn't go in. Okay, then afterwards, you suction inside in the nose, another three centimeters in the nostrils, just like that. Okay, then after that, when you're done, you now check the APGA score. Now, the APGA score is just a quick glance of the way the, the appearance of the child. So we'll, check, we'll look at the color. And the color of the child. So if you see that the extremities are still blue and, and the body is pink, well, we know on the APCA score what that means. And then you also look at the activity. If the, the baby is just lying placid on the ground, you record that, okay? And then the ref, reflex irritability, okay, the grimace. So you stimulate a bit the child. You see for any reaction to the stimulus. If there's nothing, again, you check the pulse. Okay, you count. As for the pulse, you don't necessarily have to count because we're doing this with time. So you listen to how the pulse rate is beating. Okay, if I, for example, I hit here, if the pulse is beating this way, all you need to know is that, okay, this pulse will not reach uh, 60 beats per minute, okay, in, in a minute. It will not reach 60 in one minute. And then, if you were to listen to your pulse, to the pulse of the unit, and you hear like that, then you can even grade all above 60 or above 100. Okay. So now, I check the pulse, and then I also check for the respirations. In this neonate, it's very difficult to look direct to see if the chest is rising or falling. So you bend a little to see if the chest is rising or falling. So when you conclude that that is not post, uh, there is no respiration, okay? So in your head, you can calculate what the APGA score. So in this case, there's just a heart rate, so the APGA score is three, okay? So now, when you get the ambi bag, you look for the mask and you measure. So the mask should cover the nose from the chin of the, the neonate, like that. From the chin, you place it down there and cover it. The nose and the mouth should be in this opening of the mask. Okay, right. So when you are done that, you have a lot of masks. So you compare and then you find the right mask and then you connect it to the ambi bag. Okay. Don't always forget to test your ambi bag that it's working. Okay, and then you place the ambi bag over. The, patient, the, the child's nose and mouth and create a seal. Now, this part is where people make a mistake. When you create the seal, you lift the baby's chin to open the airway at a neutral position. Now, why we say that? Most people hold the mask right here. So when you hold the mask, if I give an example like this, you hold the mask here. If you give in the air, see? Air is coming out here on the side where I'm not putting force. But if I hold my mask right there, 
and I press down like that. Put pressure. See, no air will leave the mask and it will go into the child's lungs. So we push there, lift, and now you give five rescue breaths. Okay, these are slow, deep breaths that we want to give the child. So the neonate. So you give one, two, three, four, five. As you are giving this, make sure you allow the ambivac to retake its original shape. So now, after you have given the five rescue breaths, you wait and now do the APGA score again. You check the color, you check the tone of the baby, if there's any uh, movement activity, you check the risk, re reflex irritability, you look at if there is any sign of uh, uh, the rising and falling breathing, okay, and also you listen to the pulse. So in this case, I found out the pulse is still low. Okay, it's still below 100. So this time, I'll give, okay, 15 ventilations in 30 seconds, okay? Now, these ventilation breaths are a bit faster than the rescue breaths. So the rescue breaths are only given once, and that's five of them. Okay, so now I'll give 15 ventilations, and there we go. So one, two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen okay so after i'm done giving that again we we'll sing the same song you check the color you check the tone you check the 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 the, the grimace and you also check the breathing listen for the pulse you still have a low pulse okay you can repeat this part where you give the ventilations okay if you are seeing an improvement in the pulse because usually when the oxygenation improves the pulse rate will increase and if you feel that the pulse rate has begun to increase you can continue this part of ventilating until you get a response or a cry okay so as you are ventilating and the pulse increases you'll be able to notice the increase of the pulse you're able to notice the change in color of the extremities so that is a positive you keep ventilating but if this was maybe a very severe state of uh, asphyxia then it means that maybe your pulse will maintain the same uh, rate so now when it when it comes out to be at the same rate after you have tried giving the ventilations so now we'll give the chest compressions so in this case we'll place our ambi bag there again the same spot and you give compressions okay now these chest compressions will give three chest compressions to one ventilation breath now the reason why we're doing this you might ask is there is a pulse but we are compressing so the reason we're doing this is we just want to help the heart because in this case the body has adapted and resisted there is peripheral resistance to the extremities so we just want to help the heart pump blood to reach the extremities so there then i'll so when i place my the ampli bag like that then i will start to put the compressions at least three centimeters into the chest so one two three then one ventilation again one two three one ventilation one two three one ventilation so now after that the usual you keep checking the color the tone the grimace okay and the respirations and including the pulse okay if you are seeing an improvement in the color especially and maybe there is a bit of grimace or reflex irritability the child makes a sudden move when you uh, and ventilate as we are doing this let's not forget that we have also connected oxygen to the ambu bag so that we supply the child with enough oxygen so now in, a, in an instance where the baby will finally cry okay the baby will, will cry 
after we've done the resuscitation procedure, this baby just for observations. You note for any sudden changes, neurological changes that, are, that could have been there because we took long to do this resuscitation procedure. Okay, so we need to monitor this child first before we give the child back to the mother. Okay, but if the child decides, uh, if the child cries before or maybe in the first three or so minutes of resuscitation, then the next step is to give the child back to the mother, place the child on the abdomen for kangaroo care, and that whole birth process continues the way it's supposed to be. So, now, in a scenario where this child has not cried, and for the level of training of a registered nurse, the next step that you need to do is to connect the oxygen to this child, okay, maintain warmth, and transfer this baby or this neonate to a neonatal uh, wing or a neonatal ICU where they can further manage this child. And in their further management could be intubation and administration of certain drugs that can that we use for to continue the resuscitation procedure. So um, I think this is where this procedure ends. So I hope people have understood and any questions you can ask in the comment section and it will be answered.